Hello and welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if you're new here. If you like what you see, don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps the YouTube algorithm know that the content is useful and promotes it to others. If you don't like it, let me know about it in the comments. If you still don't have a Star Citizen account, use my referral link in the description below or the code on screen to snag yourself some extra starting credits. Now on with the video. So you've decided to pledge for a game package or try out a free fly. Welcome to the verse. When you first choose to enter the Persistent Universe, or after a character reset, you'll be prompted to customize your character. This can be redone at any time from the main menu, so if you don't get your look how you want it the first time, you can revise it at any time later with no costs. After accepting your look, you're then asked to pick your starting system. Currently there's only one, Stanton. Then you'll be asked to pick your home location. For your home location, it largely doesn't matter. The only thing to note is that your home is where all the pledge items on your account are sent after any reset and the delivery location of any rented vehicles. For a brand new player, Area 18 may be preferred as it has only one tram for transit, so it's a bit harder to get lost in the city. If you decide you don't like your home location for one reason or another, you can request a character reset from the account settings reset page. After selecting your home location, you can select a specific geographical region of servers or the best option. Then click to set your primary residence, confirm, and that will join you into the game. Once you've loaded into the game, you'll begin a bed in the station hab. During your first login, this will be whatever your home location you picked was. Otherwise, it'll be whatever your last visited spaceport with a hab was. To get out of bed, hold the Y key. The Y key is your furniture exit button, used to exit things like the pilot's seat in a ship, turrets, chairs, and beds. Something that I like to do as a friendly gesture to chat is the 07 salute. But for the duration of this video, I'm going to toggle the chat on the HUD off. You can toggle chat on the HUD with the F12 key. As we get up, we can look around, but there isn't really a whole lot to do in the HAB right now. As we get close to the door, you'll notice the touch panel highlights green. This indicates there's an interaction available. To do that, we have to hold the F key to enter the cursor mode. The F key is about to become your new best friend. When we're in cursor mode, we left click the mouse that triggers the interaction. Some items may have a menu of interactions that you can do with them, as we'll see later when we enter our ship. As we exit the hab, we can go do some exploring, but right now there's not a whole lot to see in the hab area. So we'll make our way to the elevator. To access the elevator panel, we hold F and then click on the panel. Depending where the elevator is at, it may take some time to get here as it has to move through the game world in real time. Once it gets here, we can get in and pick the floor we want to go to. We hold F and click on the lobby. If you need to scroll the panel, you can do so by holding F and using the mouse wheel. And once again, we have a little bit of a wait because we have to wait for the elevator to move in real time. Once you arrive at the lobby area of the HAB, you can start doing some exploring. Most of the cities have a few shops of different types that may sell armor, FPS weapons and ammo, or ship component upgrades like guns, shields, or quantum engines. I'm just going to make my way to the train to head to the spaceport. I suspect most people watching this video will be interested in the game for its spaceflight stuff, so let's just get to it. Something you may have noticed as I ran past the guy in the medical gown a little bit back is that there are no obvious indicators of who is an NPC and who is a player. This is an intentional game design feature. If you join a party with friends, you will get some HUD markers that show their name and position. But for the general people around you, you won't know who's a player and who's an NPC unless they're wearing obvious clothes or armor that stands out. If you didn't start in Lorville like I did for this video, and you're having trouble finding your way to the spaceport, I'll be posting other videos that show you how to get from the HAB to the spaceport of all the different major cities, as well as how to find the spaceport from the sky when you're trying to land. As we wait for the train, I'll show you that you can access different camera modes. By tapping the F4 key, you can cycle the camera modes. While on foot, there are two different view modes for third person, close and far. You can then hold the Z key to enter free look and rotate the camera around the player. To return to first person, tap F4 again. Pressing any key that would trigger an action that you normally can only do in first person, like opening the Moby Glass, or holding F to enter cursor mode will also bring you back to first person. You'll notice pretty quick that all of the travel in the game is in real time. 
there really isn't any kind of teleport travel. The only teleport travel I can think of currently is upon death you'll be regened at your chosen hospital facility. Or if you're killed with a crime stat in an armistice zone, then you're regened in prison. Thankfully the train, tram, and shuttle transportation is pretty short, usually less than a minute ride. The only lengthy travel is really when you're flying around on normal ship engines outside the quantum jump or skip modes. As we look out the window, we notice that there's a very nice sunset here on Hurston. As we exit the train, we'll go through the customs area. All of the major cities will have some similar layout at the spaceport. There's also a map of the transit system here, which shows which train lines go where. Most of the major cities have some kind of map to show this, albeit with varying amounts of confusion. Most spaceports also have a terminal like this to pay off any fines. As long as you don't have many crimes racked up and they're non-violent, then you may be able to just pay it off. Though getting to them currently with the crime stat is a bit tricky. As we make our way through the spaceport, we come to the ASOP terminals. These are used to request the delivery of a vehicle stored at the current location, or to request an insurance claim on one such as if it was destroyed. We access it by entering the cursor mode by holding F and clicking the screen. It populates with any vehicles that are on your account that you can request at your current location. As this account only has the Aurora LN, I'll pick the retrieve option to have it delivered to a hangar. We are then told which hangar to use, and we get a HUD marker showing it as well. This is helpful for anyone with a goldfish memory like myself. Now we head towards the elevators to the hangars. On our way, we see the New Deal ship showroom that's here on Hurston. This is one of the locations where you can purchase additional ships in the game. But enough of that for right now. I'll have videos about how to buy ships in-game later. Let's go ahead and keep making our way to the ship in the hangar. Oh wow, they gave me a big hangar. Depending on how busy the spaceport is, they may assign a hangar intended for a larger ship, even if you have a small one. As we get closer, we can see the interaction markers for the doors come up. The Aurora has doors on either side that you can use to get in. Different ships have different ways of entering them. Some use an elevator, while others use a ramp, or some have direct access to the cockpit via a ladder. Like I mentioned in the beginning, when in the cursor mode, some objects have a menu of interactions that come up. Just use the mouse to hover over the desired choice before clicking. The Aurora has a bed we can lie down in to use the bed logging feature. This can be useful if you need to quickly shut the game down or if you otherwise don't want or cannot go to a proper spaceport with a hab to log out. We'll just interact with the pilot seat and get out of here. When you first get your ship, everything will be powered down. This is also the state it will be in after an insurance claim. To quickly get it flight ready, you can press R. Alternatively, there are keys for powering up each subsystem individually, and in many ships you can use the switches on the cockpit itself, though not all ships have the same switches or function currently at this time. First thing I want to do is suggest you set up a keybind for calling the landing services ATC. Since this is something you'll be doing quite frequently, it makes it much easier. To set up a keybind, we press Escape to open the game menu, then Options. Under Keybinds, we see a visual keyboard layout, which also has the default keybinds pictured. For now, go to Advanced Controls Customization.
look for the flight movement section and expand it to scroll down to request landing. Double click it and you'll be asked to set up a key. Then we can get back out. So now you're in your ship, powered up and ready to explore the verse. But the hangar doors are still closed and you can't get out. The first thing you need to do is request clearance from the air traffic control. Since we just set up a keybind for that, we can use it. If you opted not to because it'll break your immersion or some other reason, that's fine. To do it manually, we press the F1 to open the Moby glass. Then choose the icon on the left side of the bottom tabs. This shows us the different comm groups that we're in. We can see that we automatically get put in a special group for the ship. So anyone who gets in the ship is automatically put in that group. If we click the friends tab, you'll see any landing services nearby, which are the ACCs, as well as any friends that you may have. We click the little arrow to make a call to the landing services, which is used for both requesting takeoff and landing clearance. Upon them answering, you'll get a verbal indication that you're cleared and then the hangar doors will start to open. I normally suggest waiting until the hangar doors are nearly all the way open before attempting to fly out, and at least until you get the hang of the controls. So let's cover some of those controls. You can also take a moment to open the settings and review them on the key bindings. But for now, spacebar is your vertical up thrusters. Your left control key is your vertical down thrusters, used for landing. W will increase your throttle to your main forward thrusters. S will decrease the throttle and fire retro and reverse thrusters. A and D are your left and right str side strafing thrusters. Q and E are your left and right roll thrusters. Your mouse movement pitches the nose up and down or yaws the nose left and right. N will toggle your landing gear. Tapping the B key will toggle the quantum drive spooling. Holding the B key activates your quantum jump. L will toggle your front facing lights. C will toggle your cruise control. Be careful with the cruise controls, it's been the cause of many pilots ramming into stations. Mouse wheel, raise and lower the speed limiter. I usually suggest to new players that the first thing they do once they get in their ship is to get off the planet and up to the space station in orbit. Then they can set the regen there. The exception is around Crusader, as Port Alistar does not have a hospital, so you either have to use Crew L1 or Grim Hex as the closest locations outside Orison. So to get up to the space station, we need to exit the atmosphere and then do a very short quantum jump. So let's press F2, which quickly jumps to our map. Now this map is a little funky. Sometimes it works great, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, since we're at Lorville, you can see our little green marker over here at Hurston. We can double click Hurston, so it'll quick zoom into Hurston. It doesn't really zoom in very far. Like if I do it on one of the moons, it zooms in really close. And then we can mouse wheel in and out to get closer or further out. When we do Hurston, it, it zooms out to that planetary area and shows all the moons around it. The same thing would happen if we did it for, um, say, Microtech up here. If we do Microtech, it, it kind of zooms in, shows the moons. We can uh, click left and drag, and it kind of rotates around. But anyway, getting a little off topic. Get back into Hurston. We mouse wheel back in so we can see all of the different jump points uh, that are on the planet proper. And if we drag this around, we can see that there's Everest Harbor, which is the floating space station just up around it. So we can left click on it. That picks our Everest Harbor, which you'll see up here in the right corner uh, as our target location. And we can click set route. That sets the quantum computer to, to know that's where I want to go. It's the only point that's going to show up when I enter the quantum spooling mode. I realized I have the cruise control on, so let's get that turned off by tapping C, and then we can look around and find the quantum marker I just set on the map. And then we tap B to turn on the quantum drive, wait for it to spool up, make sure we got our crosshair on our target so that it can calibrate. Then once it's calibrated, we hold B to enter the jump. And that, dear viewers, is the basis of our first quantum jump. Now the quantum engine stays on after a jump just in case there's a multi-point jump that was plotted. 
Since we've completed the plotted jump, you'll see there's many markers that just popped up on the HUD. If we look around the planet, we can see all the local jump points. Placing the crosshair over one, we'll have it start calibrating for a manual jump instead of using the map. Anyway, since we're done quantum jumping, we tap B to turn the engine off. I guess now is a good time to also mention fuels. Depending on the ship, you will have hydrogen and possibly quantum. Since there are some ships that do not have quantum engines, they don't have quantum fuel. But the fuel indicators will be on the HUD with HYD for hydrogen and QUA for quantum. Out of quantum travel, your ship consumes hydrogen to fire any thrusters, whether main or maneuvering. If you run out, then you're basically dead in the water. So keep that in mind to refuel when you deem appropriate. There are ships that can supply refueling services to you for a fee, but they're not always available and sometimes you may encounter pirates. Traveling by quantum, of course, consumes quantum fuel. There are different quantum engines that have varying speed and efficiency of the fuel. When you use the map mode to set the navigation path, it will inform you of your capacity as well as how much fuel is required for the plotted jumps. The typical method of refueling is to use the maintenance tab in the movie glass identified by a wrench icon. You can only use this when landed in a hangar or on a landing pad that offers services. This allows for repairing the ship of any damage, restocking any countermeasures, ballistic ammo or missiles, and refueling both quantum and hydrogen fuel. You'll notice as we get into range of the station that we were notified of entering the armistice zone. You can think of this as a safe zone where combat is prohibited. I say prohibited, not prevented. While it does prevent some types, some players have found ways around that. You can also see the icon in the top right of a circle around a bullet with a slash through it. This signifies that you're inside the armistice. Let's really quickly contact the ATC to get our landing clearance. Press F1 to open the Moby Glass and use the COM tab. Then friends, find the landing services and click the contact button. Once we're clear for landing, we should see a HUD marker with a small arrow to identify the location. Some places have hangar doors on the roof, while others are on the side. So it takes some looking around to see where to go sometimes. So as we head towards the indicated marker to enter the hangar, don't forget to lower your landing gear with N. Take your time to position and lower yourself in. Most of the time they give you plenty of time before they complain about you taking too long and reassign your spot. This usually only happens at a port that is very heavily in use where all the hangars are full at the same time. Something else I just noticed is I didn't have my landing lights on, so you can tap L to turn them on. You can utilize the third person external ship view by pressing F4, and then you can hold the Z key to rotate the camera around the ship. Then continue your descent with the control key. Hopefully you'll do a better job and won't clip the back of your ship like I did here. Once you touch down, if you're in first person view, you'll hear a radio call indicating they registered you as landed. You may also hear the hangar doors closing. Do not try to take off and leave without waiting for them to close and then calling for clearance to leave again. You'll see in the video on the left cockpit display I started receiving a video call. This happens from time to time and is the local security forces looking for contraband. There will be a notice on screen to halt movement and wait for scanning. If you're moving, you'll need to stop or risk a crime stat and then they attack. If you're landed and you're trying to leave your ship, you can just get up and leave while they do their business. Since I've landed, I turned off the engines by tapping I. Always turn off the engines before leaving the ship. So, to get up out of the pilot seat, we just hold Y. To exit our ship, we enter the cursor mode by holding F and interacting with the door. And we can either wait for the animation to play out, or if we're fast enough, we can just run right through the door. Then we head over to the elevators to take them to the lobby where the ASOP terminals are. The nice thing about the hangars at the space stations is they have their identification numbers easily visible. So if you're landing to pick someone up, you can just tell them where to go and wait there. 
but I'm going to take the elevator to the lobby and store the ship. Forgot to mention previously, the other icon in the top right corner, the one that looks like a satellite, represents the local comma ray. When the indicator is present, you are within range of an active comma ray and criminal actions that you take will be reported and incur a crime stat. If the array is down or you're outside the range of an active comma ray, then it will go unreported. Now that we're at the ASOP terminals, we can store the ship or request a different one if we have multiple. I like to store it to keep the hangars available for others at busy ports. Now I'm going to go ahead to the medical facility to set my regen. As I mentioned before, I usually recommend for new players to do this as one of the first things. You'll inev inevitably die for one reason or another, and having a regen on the space station makes it much faster to get back out there, as you won't have to traverse the major city's trains and such. So to set your regen, you can do this either by checking in at the main terminals here to get a room, which is used to get a bed so you can do full medical treatment in case you injured a limb or something, or you can find the regen terminal to quickly set your regen location. So to check in, we simply interact with the terminal and wait for it to give us a room. Now that we have a room, we just need to find it. As we head into the facilities, we see the regeneration terminals, which can be used to quickly set us up without needing a room. To do that, we just interact with the terminal and choose to transfer imprint. If we already had it set, then we would also have an option to reset it back to our home location. If you transfer imprint to one location, but then want to move it somewhere else, you just simply visit a new hospital, go to the regen terminal, and transfer it to that one. So now that we found our bed, we just need to interact with it to lie down. Then we could proceed with any kind of medical care that we might have had. If we had any injuries, they would show up here, and we can triage and take care of that. But since we don't, we can back out. And now we can go ahead and set our regeneration point and transfer the imprint. And once we click confirm, you'll notice that the option to transfer imprint has now changed to reset location. Now if we die, we'll respawn in this hospital. So to get out of the bed, we just have to hold Y. So the last thing I want to show you before I end this video as it's getting pretty long, is where to get medical supplies. So as we head back out of the room, we'll come across the pharmacy. Whoa, server lag. So anyway, uh, as we're heading back out of the room, we come across the pharmacy gear. In the terminal there, we can find the standard medical pens, as well as the other drugs which can alleviate symptoms of some injuries. We'll also see the medical gun, whose icon is not showing up right now. Uh, so if we sell and then back to buy, that should fix it. There we are. Uh, so we have the medical gun, uh, which has a nice feature of being able to apply any of the drugs as well as standard healing. And we also have the refill kit, uh, and then attachments which can be used on the multi-tool. So I'm going to end the video here as I think we've covered a good bit to get started. I hope this helps you all with your first foray into the verse. I'll have some more videos coming up to showcase different contracts and missions that are available to make money, so don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss that.